Hey guys. Today we're gonna to start working on a mantle. This is going to be eight feet wide, six inches by six inches, and it's gonna go over a fireplace. We're gonna make it out of walnut, solid wood, that we picked up at a local hardwood reseller. The boards are rough sawn, so we gotta prep them, and then miter the corners so that we get a complete box. So here's the edge of one of our boards. You can see that it's not very smooth. It's actually pretty rough. And it's got some rough on the surface. This board was run through a planer multiple times to get it to this stage. We're gonna to have to do some additional work to it. But the first thing we have to do is clean up at least one edge. We clean up that edge on our table saw using a sled. The sled can be made of many different materials, but in this case, we'll use some three quarter inch plywood. Using the factory edge on the plywood, we'll run along the fence on the table saw. That will give us a straight, clean cut, and the hold downs will make sure that the board doesn't slide around, creating one nice, solid, straight line. With that straight line taken care of, I wanted to take care of the surfaces. Remember we had some rough spots? Passed it through my surface planer or thickness planer a few times, about four or five per side, all the same thickness, to really get a smooth finish because what I really wanna do now is look at all the matching grains. And that's what I'm doing here. You can see that I've marked it with some chalk lines to make sure I can line everything up. And I also know where to cut the end pieces. But now we gotta cut that 45 degree. Given the needs of this joint, I didn't press the guides on the table saw, so I used this jig, I built it using some plans from online. And it works really well because the phone is incredibly accurate to set an angle. Now let's start actually cutting those 45s. You notice I'm using some plywood here and I have some hold downs, some table saw fence extensions and an infeed table. I started out with plywood because I needed to make sure that I could set up all of the cuts properly. This plywood is kind of warped, but that's okay. We're gonna be able to fix that a little later. Now I'm just laying out for some biscuit joints using my square. You don't have to be that precise on them, but uh, that way I can make sure I get even covered. I cut the biscuits on both sides, like you normally would, but you'll notice that I have the fence on the biscuit joiner set at 45, and I'm careful on how I set it because that 45 is kind of tricky. Here I'm prepping for a dry fit, uh, very important especially with this long piece. As I rolled the piece over, I was really struggling to get this to all come together, and again it's because of that curve. You saw it when I was on the table saw. So I took a pretty straight 2x4, I clamped it to the plywood, to keep it straight and I was able to make the fit. I'm going to use the same technique later when I use the actual uh, hardwood. And now some glue. Uh, I'll spread that out with my finger in this case and just make sure the biscuits have plenty of glue in them. That's one of the keys to biscuit joinery. You just make sure you got enough glue in those biscuit joints or else they tend to rock and move around. But ultimately, it's the glue on the surfaces that does most of the work. Now I'm going to go through a lot of clamps here. Uh, I want to make sure that joint is nice and tight and square. Because I cut the 45s pretty precisely, the joint automatically will bring itself square with the biscuits. But like you'll see in a minute, I took out all kinds of different clamps that I have. And I was really lucky with these Jergens uh, clamps that I have. A uh, friend gave me... They come in real handy for this, and later on I'll be able to squeeze across the entire joint. I flipped a piece over to make it a little easier to hang off of the workbench, and there you have it, a whole bunch of clamps. All of them designed to hold this corner together. This was after one night of glue up, and I felt really good, so I went ahead and started cutting the hardwood. I had to take my time with this one because I didn't want to have the saw nick that corner. Uh, ultimately, you're going to see that fine edge at the top of the mantle. With the edges cut, now i got to cut the ends. And as you can imagine, I don't have an 8-foot table set up for this, so I have to put in some temporary supports. And then I set up my chop saw at 45. Turns out this is much better than either using my table saw or trying to do a different kind of cut with, say, a handsaw. And like before, I'm going to lay out for my biscuits. Make sure that the ends are nice and smooth and lined up. And then about every 12 inches, I'll put a biscuit.
And again, I'm going to use my biscuit joiner with that 45. But just take your time to set the fence. If the biscuits aren't quite right, the joint won't come together and you won't get that smooth line. Here I'm going to use a brush to spread everything out. I want to get a smooth, even uh, layer of glue on everything. And I'm using waterproof glue, not so much because of the waterproof, but because it's brown. And later on when it gets onto the wood and hardens, and dries, it blends in better with the color. And like before, I'm just going to put clamps on it. But you'll see that I have four clamps laid out on the bench. I thought that this would make it a lot easier to do the initial clamping. I'm not sure. Uh, jury's still out, if you will. Because when I did clamp everything together, it was kind of hard to see that edge, uh, that, that joint. So not 100% sure that was the best call. But again, just lay your biscuits in. Put your board. Line up all those holes. And make sure that your ends are even and flush. The tape that I had put on here originally was to hold the joint together. And I just came across. Just walk the joint through and tighten it up. Nothing too fancy, nothing too clever. I do have a strip of wood across the entire face so that I don't mar it with the clamps. And the back of the piece is going to get uh, milled anyways. So any marring we'll, we'll take care of later. And again, all these clamps come in handy. <laughs> Woodworkers can never have enough clamps. I didn't want to over tighten. So I walked the entire joint carefully and tried to figure out if we were high on one side or another. Now we're going to do the ends, the end caps. Back to the uh, saw, my chop saw, to get those 45s. And here I left one side long. I'll just measure it with a pencil, mark it, cut it, and there you go. I had originally thought I would use biscuits here, but given the size of the piece, not really necessary. So some glue. And here the blue painter's tape did come in handy. Uh, it's a great clamp for these kinds of situations. I lay on two pieces first and then just wrap the joint in tape to make sure that it doesn't move around. I, I took a couple of uh, tries to adjust it to make sure that everything lined up properly. I did it on both ends and let the piece dry overnight. And now get rid of some of that glue. I could have laid some tape on that edge and that would have kept the glue from coming over the joint. But I knew that I would have to do some sanding and cleanup so I didn't worry too much about it. Now here what I'm doing is I'm trimming the bottom. I did not miter the bottom in. Even though it is solid wood, it's just a butt joint. Because at the bottom, you, no one's really going to see it unless they're lying on the floor. And ultimately, they're going to see solid wood. Having cut one end square, I just marked it with my pencil, took it back to my chop saw, and cut it to length. After test fitting, I went in and put in some pocket hole screws. Don't need too many. We're, we're going to have glue all over the surface. And again, this is the bottom of the piece and not likely to be seen. But I wanted to make sure that I could pull all those surfaces together. Here I'm using one of those clamps again to clamp across the entire surface and pull the two ends together with this one clamp while I put the screw in. Now we're going to do some milling. The piece, even though it looks pretty good, it wasn't entirely flat. So I set up these two rails. Uh, they're straight edges. You can get them at the home center. And just mounted a long base on my router. And methodically went through the entire piece. Did a thick pass first and then brought the router back for some thin passes to get everything nice and smooth and even. And that last cut, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Some nice long cuts to make sure that the router doesn't gouge. Now let's cut the French cleat. When I originally cut that plywood to test all of the jigs, it left me with some 45s. So I just ripped down that one piece to make my French cleats. The 
box is eight feet long and the cleat is only six feet. I wanted to give myself some wiggle room to move stuff around, so I'm just finding the center on the box. And I'm preparing the internals for that box. One of the things that I have to do is put a back on this so that I can attach the cleat. If I don't do that, where is the cleat gonna go? I also wanted to reinforce the box because even though I did a pretty good job getting these boards all smoothed out and level and square, there may be still some kind of curve on the top and having that reinforcement will help the whole piece out. Uh, here I figured out that my piece was just a little too short for all my power tools so I had to set up my little quarter inch ratchet to put the screws in. It took me a little while and I have a few more cuts in my hand because of it but all in all worked really well. And here I am putting the glue in for the back. The pieces are set just the right distance from the back of the mantle itself so that when I put the French cleat in, it fits just right. Countersinking the screws, go ahead and drive them in. And you notice I'm just driving in one side because later I'll come back with a clamp and pull the other piece towards that backing. And here we are. And I just walked down the entire back of the piece, moving the clamp along. With the back on, it's time to test the cleat. Now, I, I gotta make sure that this fits because ultimately I have to be able to slide the entire mantle into place. Some more glue and screws to hold the upper part of the cleat in place. And one final test to make sure everything fits. Now, one of the things I have to do is make sure that I get the right distance. I have some tight tolerances for this piece. So I set this rule across the back. Since I offset that cleat a little bit, I need to figure out what the distances are so I can set a line on the wall and attach the cleat. Here, I'm using the bottom edge of this plywood as the top edge of the fireplace. And eventually I will take this piece entirely to the home where I'm installing all this and use it to set everything up. i have just made the install a lot easier. And again, there's a line set. You saw me draw that up. And I attached that entire piece to the back of one of my tables. And here's where the importance of having the gap right comes in. Once I had it in, I triple checked everything to make sure it was good and level. And then we get to one of my favorite parts, sanding. Now, sanding these pieces, I use the pencil method, and that's where you take a pencil and draw several lines across your piece. That way you can make sure that you get total coverage and that you're consuming or, or sanding through a, a layer of that wood. You don't wanna to go too, uh, uh, too far into it, so that's what the pencil really gives you, is that thickness. As the grit of sandpaper got smaller and smaller, I started with 80 and worked my way to 220. I slowed down. Uh, I didn't want any uh, swirl marks on the wood, so I just took my time. Once I was finished sanding, I wrapped everything up and took it over to the homeowner's home. And here you can see where I have that board set up uh, underneath the fireplace and the cleat installed. And you saw those uh, little pieces of two by four down below. Those were set level to hold the plywood in place. And here it is, the mantle in place. And now the mantle with the TV, soundbar, and all of the pieces together, it, it set really nicely off of the white wall at uh, kind of a tile stone. And the owners are going to be staining this, so I wanted them not to put any wine or get any liquids on it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, it was a bit challenging from time to time, but an awesome project overall. And join us next time on Rick's Woodworking to see what else we'll build.